You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're doing it over here at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler. You can find me on social media at Ryan Sickler. My website's ryansickler.com. That's where you can go follow me on social media, get my latest album, find my tour dates. Let me hit you with some tour dates we have coming up because I'm going to be out with uh, Tommy Buns. June 13th, we're in Richmond, Virginia. The 14th of June, Hanover, Maryland. And then the 15th, Atlantic City. And then a couple weeks later, the 27th in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 28th in Wichita, Kansas, and then the 29th and 30th in Kansas City. August 1st through 3rd, I'm at the House of Comedy in Minnesota, and then I think it's September 14th. Let me double check that. I'm in Baltimore. Um, I, as always, I want to tell you thank you for all the positive feedback. You guys are fucking amazing. Uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, however, just make sure you're subscribed to the uh, Honeydew uh, download it, review it, and also make sure you're subscribed to the Your Mom's House YouTube channel, all right? That's where you'll get Honeydew episodes every Tuesday. Um, and you can go to the honeydewpodcast.com to email me and follow the show on social media. All the links are there. And if you are new to this show, what we do here is laugh in the face of adversity. We like to find a little bit of light in the darkness. And as I always say, these are the stories behind the storytellers. And today... My light in the darkness, the story behind the storyteller, Mr. Andrew Santino. Welcome to the Honey Dude. Thanks, brother. brother. What light in the darkness is that? Is that because of my hair? I knew you were going to say that. Is that and what it that is. is? It is. Yeah. Do you say that for everybody? The uh, light in the darkness. I've been starting to frame it up a little bit, you know, to tee it up in case you're new to the it's show. Really, it's really know? sweet. The light but, in the darkness. Uh, you're the lighter and the you're the red. I'm the lightest lighter in this motherfucker. I'm the lightest of the lighters. This you is are. it. How are I'm you the light doing? in the darkness. I'm good, man. How are you? I'm great. Uh, why don't you please? Plug, promote, whatever you'd like. Sure. Let everybody know where they can find Santino, your podcast. Yeah, your yeah. Dates, go, to, uh, go to andrewsantino.com for all of the appropriate Santino-ness stuff that you need. Show dates. Uh, this weekend, I'm in uh, uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut at Stress Factory. The next weekend, I'm at the La Jolla Comedy Store in San Diego. Uh, and check all those dates on andrewsantino.com. Go to Cheeto Santino on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you find my life. Cheeto Santino. I love the Cheetos. I should get sponsored Santino. by those motherfuckers. I'm, I'm either going to get sponsored or sued by Frito-Lay or whoever makes them. But at some point, I'm going to have a, a cease and desist letter. I thought about that. I was like, I wonder if they're ever going to come after me about that shit. And they if will. They have it yet. People tag me in them all the time. And I always, people, I'm always, I'm always like, don't answer. I don't respond to it because I don't want them to have see them. Have they like, ever responded back? No, but I'm. But they got their eye on me. I can Except tell. Set that cheat on your fucking ass. Right? <laughs> Chester, Chester gonna be Chester's like, what's up, player? Hey, man. <laughs> you need to knock that shit off, bro. Just come smack the shit there out of me. There can only be one of us. <laughs> um, first of all, I, yeah. I want to say thank you. And we were outside talking about the comedy community, uh, especially out here on the West Coast. Everybody sort of like a little mafia supporting each other, helping yeah. each other out. And uh, I happened to do uh, Rick Bronson's uh, House of Comedy yep. in Phoenix. Great club, great people, by oh, the yeah. way. Great people. Rick and Tammy. Um, and you hit me up and said, hey, I'm going to leave some weed for you. And I was like, I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah. It had do not touch for Ryan Sickler <laughs> written on the shit. <laughs> yeah, because I thought I was like, I'm not going to be able to finish this weed. And I don't know where I was going next. Actually, I think, and it was a pack of joints, those... Yeah. Um, what are they called? Uh, Lowell. uh, Lowell Farms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not going to be able to take this back. Uh, I was like, I should just leave. The and then I looked on the calendar. If it was anybody else, I probably wouldn't have done it. I love it, dude. But I knew you were coming. I was like, hey, man, I, leave, I left you some weed. So like a mom, like a, like a, yeah. <laughs> like a mom, yeah. like a little sack lunch I wrote. I and I wrote for the it. maid, do not touch <laughs> for Ryan Sickler only. Well, I was at their Edmonton club just not long ago. And just so you know, I paid it for it all. So it was a nice nug I couldn't finish. And I left, left that see? out for whoever's next. The community. That's there the should be goes, something. Man. We should have started. This is like, a, you know, the Oprah like pays people's tolls and all that bullshit. That's You're getting weed. You're, <laughs> You're getting weed. weed. You're Look under your weed. chair. <laughs> the huge bag of weed. Ah! Loses it. Ah! <laughs> That's what we should do, though. We should start a community program of comics that has like a, there should be an online shareable Google Doc calendar of where people were yeah. and who's leaving who's what. leaving behind. Yeah. Wouldn't you love that shit? <laughs> I'm like, oh, we got some whiskey and tequila in Phoenix. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would be good. It would it'd be cool. We'd look forward to it. But yeah, I had to leave, I'll leave you a little something because uh, you got you to gotta get, you got to have something in the desert, man. It's 
tough out there sometimes. It's a well, little boring sometimes. So well, I was like, speaking of tough, mm-hmm. that's what we'd like to talk about on this show here. Yeah. I asked you to come, and I, you know, I always ask everybody what they want to come and talk about. One of the things you said you wanted to talk about was failure because you've yeah. had a lot of failure. Yeah. But we were talking before. And you said that you had some uh, health issues. So I want to talk about that because yeah. what you mentioned, I don't even know. I don't even know how to say it. Say, say, let's see if you think you know how to say it. Prostatitis. Prostatitis. No, you're I right. Did get That's it? good. Yeah, I did. I wanted you to fuck it up a little bit. Prostatitis. Prostatitis. That's a street <laughs> That's name. That's how I'm going to keep saying Hey, man, my boy got prostatitis. <laughs> prostatitis. Got that itis. Got an itis, man. He got the itis in his booty. Yeah, prostatitis. People, I have, I have chronic prostatitis. It's an inflammation of the prostate gland. The prostate gland, kids, is in your butthole. It's up through your booty and you got to go to a doctor to get it checked out and they have to, they have to, I mean, physically they have to finger you for about a good two or three minutes. For real? It's the unco- it's most uncomfortable shit. You'll have to go get it done someday. Most men over, o- over 55, they ask you to go get a prostate exam once in a while because prostate cancer is crazy common and bad. Well, I thought it was at 40 and when I went 40? to my doctor, I thought uh, you had to get your I think prostate it was older checked than that. at 40 and then when I went to my doctor when I was 40 for my physical, I was like, you're not going to check my prostate? He's like... Nah, that they moved that to fifty. He's yeah, like, I I can check it. They if moved you want. it. I was like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. But ten years is a long time to wait. You they know, moved it to fifty. So the, what happens? Because I, I had a friend that that was having prostate trouble, and this dude he couldn't even take a leak. So that's bad. Is that, that part of it? No, that that's when it's really bad. Mine was more like um, it's like pain and discomfort in your undercarriage. You know, something's wrong underneath the car. Like you can't between you know your nifkin, your grundle, your your gooch, your taint, your taint. There's weird pressure. Like weird, crazy. I can't describe it other than like, uh, you remember like a, when you were a kid and you were on like a like you BMX rode your bike, bike all day and you that slam, pain. And, and you, yeah. you know if you went off a jump and slammed on the oh, seat, yeah, yeah, and it kind of vibrated through your body. It's like that all the time though. You feel no, that? it comes and it goes. It comes. But you and it feel goes. that through your body? Yes, bro. Fuck. Sometimes I feel it in my back. And then you have to have a doctor finger your ass. To make well, here's you feel what people. Here's what's up. They they take. Well, that's just for half. That's for fun. <laughs> 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 Sometimes I just go in. He's like, you don't have any symptoms. I'm like, I don't. This thing's not swollen at all. Yeah. Well, oh. Well, you want to make it swollen? Get out. Get out. So I, I, uh, I go in. Uh, I go. I had to go in, and this is what's crazy. So that when he's pushing on it inside of you, bro, you, I, I was scared. I was gonna piss because you feel like you're, you're going. You know when you, you know when you've held your piss for so long, and the moment it gets, it's like, gah, ah, it's yeah, this and big it relief. Burns and I, feels dude, good. he hit it. He pushed it so hard. I, I thought I was gonna piss all over the table. I got so nervous. Then I was like, I'm gonna be embarrassed of the health scare. My, a guy's finger in my ass, and I'm gonna pee all over this room. It's gonna be like the worst day of my life. But he's like, you're feeling like you gotta pee. Don't just, don't worry about it. You're not gonna pee. You're not gonna pee. I promise. He's like, just tell me what hurts the most. I'm hard now. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm hard. <laughs> So he tells you where he tells you, you know, you tell him where the most sensitive spot is, and then they give you all these different. Wait, hold on. You tell huh? him once he's inside, feel yeah, around, when he's you're inside like, your there, booty. There, yeah. yeah, that's where you're. He t- tells okay. you where it's the most. Sen- you'll tell him where it's the most sensitive, and then they give you different pills, dude. There's a million different prostate pills to try to reduce inflammation, to get out of bacterial infection. It starts with an infection. Most people get like an infection. Th- they don't know how. There's a million different ways. When did it start for you? <laughs> Couple years three years ago, ago. Three yeah years three years ago, ago. And, and what was what did you notice first just trouble urinating no it was never i could n- never trouble but like going all the time and i was oh, like oh frequent yeah i, mean, I was uh, like maybe i'm drinking too much water when i like if i'm going if i'm running because i run every day so i was like maybe i'm just drinking too much water no that's not it and then i changed that up still was pissing all the time and then after you piss it, it would feel like you you didn't clear that's what they say you didn't clear you know like there's something left in the gates, yeah. you know, the bridge is closed, but it's like, there's something left behind it. So I'd feel like that all the time, like pressure. And then this, then this weird, like I have to piss again, even though I just pissed, you know? And, and then like, so you go in there, you do all, he gives you all these medications and half of them are placebos. I think like some of them work, some of them don't, they change the color of your piss. One of them made my piss like bright red. It was crazy. Red. Yeah. It just, try, it flushes shit out. It's just trying to flush stuff out. But it's it. But honestly, man, it fucks with my head. It got me real sad and depressed because I was like, "What if this is? What if I have can- the medication did? No, no, no. The, just just the anxiety the from all of it. Yeah, the prostatitis got me. The itis got me. Gotcha. Because gotcha. I was like, "What if I have cancer? What if I'm dying? Yeah, you know what I mean? What if I'm yes. dying? What if? Because internal shit. Anybody who has problems with it knows. And there'll be some fans that'll be like, "Dude, I had something so similar." They they don't really know the prostate well enough. They know about ca- prostate cancer because it's easy to fix now. But they just don't know like what causes prostatitis or inflammation of the pro. There's a million factors, hereditary, your diet, all this shit, 
And I just couldn't figure, we, we couldn't figure it the fuck out. So I went to two different cats and both of them were like, it seemingly has a tie to your levels of like uh, overworked anxiety and lack of sleep. So when I'm not really, when I'm on the road and I'm moving, I'm not taking care of myself. That was when it was, when it went up. But then there were other times that I, it wasn't and it's still, and I still was in pain. So it comes and it goes. It's, it's the weird, it's, dude, it's the weirdest shit. I can't describe it. I wish it was gone forever, but there's no fix. There's no like, I mean, you just said. Uh, there's nothing you can do where you're like, you're good for the next 15 years. It goes away on its own. Like a lot of times, like I haven't had it in a long time now. It's been fine. But then sometimes it just comes up out of nowhere. Like there's, I can't, I wish I had, they wish, you know. Um, you ever have it hit you on stage? No, no. It's never like that. It Don't you find that when you're on stage, like there's times where I'm like, oh my God, I think I have to take a shit or piss or whatever, right. just as they're calling me up. Right, right. And then everything just fucking goes, goes away. away. Yeah. It just goes away yeah. for an hour. The I don't know how it happens. Somehow the, like, the worst anxiety I've ever had, like if I'm about to do a big show, the moment I get on stage, it's, it's over. Gone. But everything before way. it, you're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. You're just so it? in the moment for that hour that you don't think about any of your Nothing. problems or anything. Yeah, it's a trip. Like, what, like when I did Conan for the first time, when I was behind the curtain, I was tripping. I was freaking the fuck out. Because I had had some drinks. I had friends in the green room. We were feeling it. We were doing good. I was like, this is cool as shit. Everything was lax. And the moment I got behind the curtain, <clears throat> I was freaking out. I was like, oh shit. Oh shit. Should I not have had another drink? We were fucking off in the room. We were goofing around too much. Then the moment I got out, I was like, oh, it's all good. But yeah, the stage somehow wipes that shit away. But I haven't had it on. I haven't had it in a while, but it never affected me on stage like that. Because otherwise I wouldn't go up. If I was yeah. feeling that much pressure and annoyance, it would be the only thing on my mind. But they gave me a bunch of different pills, and they also um, use, um, you know, um, Rogaine. You know Rogaine, like yeah. for hair growth. Yeah. Rogaine was developed for prostate cancer for for people with prostate problems. And it just started making them grow hair for real. That's, Is a, that that's right? literally how it happened. Yeah, I read somewhere, and I'm, I get things wrong a lot, but I feel like Viagra was for. Um, oh, fuck, I can't remember what it was originally for. Well, it's, it was heart medication. Wasn't I think it? so. Yeah, that was and heart then medication. they called it back they were like all right and then the women sent their shit back or stopped using it but guys kept fucking using it and that's when they're like what's going on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> proctor gamble like hey um my heart isn't as good as i want it to be could i have more of those all these guys are having heart problems i don't care about, about the hard dick. blindness <laughs> yeah. have you ever used those Bonapos? I had I used one time because yeah. uh, I had a sponsor and I was like I want to see if this shit really works and uh, it did work man yeah it worked to the point where it got annoying after a while see, I was I like, get yeah. the fuck go the fuck to yeah. sleep you know I was trying to go to bed <laughs> yeah, man. Dude. I'm up all night your with dick this is on drugs yeah. that thing that's such a weird idea that you your dick is on drugs by yeah. itself yeah it's doing its own it's fucking all alone thing down there yeah after you come it's, it just stays hard the whole time yeah no it no? gets but it comes back quick yeah so real quick you just need to like you remember when remember when the old school remember days when you of were baseball? 14 <laughs> <laughs> remember the old school days of baseball when the bullpen dude would sprint to the fucking mound yep that's what you got that's where they drove him out in the car that's what the fuck that's how quick it is yeah. it's right back after yeah that. yeah Without that, I'm I'm the old third base coach that's hobbling over the line, just slowly getting there, limping and shit. limping. Yeah, I've never done. I've never tried. I have no ambition to try it. But you know what's so funny? I remember being like 15, and my dad like like an ad came on the radio. I was in the car with my dad, and an ad came on for erectile dysfunction pills or something like that. And he was like, <laughs> like laughed it off. I was like, what's that? what? And he was like, yeah, you're not gonna need those. We got good blood. We got <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like man dad can still get it rock i'm glad i don't need it because i'm on yeah all kinds of medication what are you that, on that blood pressure cholesterol that are you is, really oh, i have been since my 20s but you don't need it anymore do you really fuck yeah I you think so it. look i even when my doctors have told me even if you went full vegetarian whatever your body just manufactures cholesterol it's just something your body hereditary does. Then. hereditary yeah. straight hereditary and right. then i find out i got this weird blood disease that no one knew I had till a couple of years it ago. It's called factor five light. And it's, uh, my blood is prone to clot. It's thick. It's thicker than most blood. Thick it's got blood. that thick blood, bro. Got Good that blood. Thick blood. Yeah, <laughs> <that thick thick>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sickler got the thick blood. So, um, so it clot. Wait, so your blood just clots? It can, yeah, it can clot. Like when I fly and shit, I gotta wear compression pants. I gotta get up every ninety minutes. I gotta walk, Damn. shit like that. Stretch my legs. Well, I can't like, take uh, long drives without. St I gotta make every. I'm the guy in the car. It's gotta make everybody stop <laughs> every and two shit. hours. <laughs> God damn, Sickler, get out! Hold on, man. I gotta get out. I, 
My legs will just, my legs will be <laughs> like stiff as fuck if I don't. It's ridiculous. Dude. Wait, you wear compression socks on planes? Pants. Pants? Compression pants? On planes, yeah. Like that Under Armour? Yep. Look at you're you're ready to play. Yep. I'm ready you get to get off go the plane. Point, you're ready I'm, to I'm play. fucking gassers. I'm running gassers <laughs> up and down the aisle, ready for anybody. Down and back. Down and back. Let's go. Touch the line. <laughs> yeah, the, the fucking gas. <laughs> the, the flight attendant's uh, <laughs> like. <laughs> so I was like, please stay in your seat. Sickler's got to run. <laughs> gotta I'm run one of those idiots line that's got to stand in the back. But when I fly with my daughter, that's what I do. I walk her up to the front. They give her, you know, pins yeah, yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. And then we just keep walking and shit. Where do you sit on the plane with your kid? Well, I'm not a fan of turbulence at all. Who is? Uh, so there are a lot of people that are. They fucking laugh and love it like it's a goddamn well, roller Well, it doesn't bother me at all. It fucks with me these days. It didn't used to. It does Why now. is it now? Because you got a kid? You know what it is? It's no. It's just a control thing. That's all it is. Totally. It's I'm not in control of that. That's all. Yeah, and I don't that, know yeah. why it's happening and what's going on at this exact moment. You know, I always, well, I'm the dude that walks on the plane all the time. Like, how we looking? <laughs> how we looking the whole way, guys? We're going to dip down if we need to. We're going to bank around some shit <laughs> you're outside checking the wings with the pilot before the flight he's like sir get back and you're like i just want to see just want to see what it looks like from down here <laughs> this boat looks a little loose right here <laughs> um so you, you you sit over the wings is what they say yeah over right. the wings That's, it's a little more minimized right, yeah right, and in the yeah. back it's worse and i made that mistake one time you get that back the one that doesn't even go back is first of all you're back by the toilets yeah you're, by, you're right hearing by the all toilet. the shit they're talking about the flight mm -hmm. attendants are talking about their bullshit in the yep. back you know that's the worst seat you can get yeah do you fly first class ever only if i've ever been luckily upgraded yeah you no. know you'll never pay for it no mm -hmm. i shouldn't say i'll never pay for it if i make enough money i'd rather fly first class but, yeah you know i'm back there with i go southwest bro so unfortunately bwi is a southwest hub so i just rock southwest uh, LAX i guess yeah bwi straight doesn't so make I, any I, sense flying out of burbank i'll always take southwest but if i have to go to lax i'll do ever, anything else yeah. but 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 my god i used to be freaked out on planes all the time about that shit about crashing no just about like just like planes going bad i had so many bad experiences on planes like so what? many bad oh my god leaving um Colorado one year leaving Denver it's the worst Denver's the fuck it is. that's the one they say where the pilots grow fucking you know, hair that, on their that's nuts that's where my lady's from so we have to go there I have to go there uh -huh. all the time oh yeah and you're going out of Burbank yes so you got that mountain range yep. that you're going out of yep. like this into the fucking worst one in the country yep. probably yep. yeah it's one, terrifying. We, were, we were leaving one time there was a thunderstorm in the mountains and it was so bad <clears throat> the plane looked like it was standing still I'll never forget it we were looking at the storm out the window and I was like we're not moving <laughs> Like the wind was so strong yeah. that it was just fighting against the wind, and the, and and the plane, um, the plane had to, we had to reroute our course to go so far around the storm. It cost us another hour in the sky of flight time, and getting out around that storm was unforgettable. I mean, even the t even the most seasoned veteran flyers, yeah. everyone was looking around like, ooh, it was bad. The whole time was like this. I mean, it was you know it was just like you were a little fuck. You know, as if someone was hitting a little toy. You know what I mean? It was like a dog hitting a toy. It just felt like it was getting smacked around. That that was one of the worst. And it an hour of that, twenty minutes I can handle. Thirty minutes, an hour was like, mm. <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. I was like, I was just watching. I might go slip my throat in the bathroom. There are people showing turban. They're praying. They're like, I love my family. They're recording it though. You know, the whole time I'm like, oh, look at this motherfucker. I had um, I've told this story before. This was this was terrible. Well, two stories uh and you want to talk about definitely feeling like a fucking honey doing an asshole on a plane but i unbeknownst to me i had fallen asleep and vividly i saw from my pov the plane just dipping and nose diving like this right and with everything i had in me like i was dying i went oh <laughs> and i mean every i mean people in the back you know popping up to see who the fuck it was i was like oh and then i just i still had about four hours to go on this motherfucker and i just threw my hoodie over my face and laid there for four fucking hours i would have let my blood clot I'll tell you that. i was so humiliated you wanted to die oh, yeah you're like take me away so fucking embarrassed take me away from this shit. so embarrassed wait so, wait the compression the compression pants are really funny to me because i see sometimes i see old women wearing the socks and i saw a woman change her socks on the plane the compression socks and when she took them off her feet were like, it yeah, like it's like a balloon filled yeah, up it helps keep shit in man. it made me laugh so fucking hard yeah. i know that's mean as shit but it was like it was like that's the simpsons it was, like, <laughs> it, was like, it was so weird looking man um another time on a flight 
this is an old story I told way back on the crab feast, but we were going to we this. We don't talk about the crab feast anymore. We a little bit. <laughs> we were going to this military gig off you may have done it off San Mark I think it's San Marcos Island. You go up to Ventura and no. you take this you take this rickety fucking ass military plane. Right. And I mean the whole time <laughs> <laughs> everything in it the trays are shaking you're just like what the fuck right and they say that when you get out to this little island it has its own weather because it's so far out there that just shit swirling around it all the sure. time it's its own little literally island and um we're coming in and there's a cook that's on it that flies three four times and he's all they're always doing this they're, they're used, used to that to shit it. yeah and we're asking uh questions about you know is this normal? And they're fucking with us because they know we're scared. Right. All right. And Daryl Wright was on the plane. And Daryl was extra scared. So they took just <laughs> absolute pleasure in scaring the fuck out of him about of course. this. So they would. But then, boom, we hit one. And that's when I saw all the veterans white knuckle their fucking thing. And I was like, that's not good. And here comes flight attendant power walking like she's in compression pants to the fucking back of the goddamn thing and she sat in her little jumper and she buckled up and i looked back at her and there was a look on her face like this isn't normal and we started getting caught up in wind big time and we're coming in the land and the whole time again everything's everything's shaking you the the fucking yeah, yeah. luggy all of it and the wind took us to the point where when we we were just about to come in the plane turned like this i could see the runway out of your side window yeah fuck yeah fuck and then he banked it back around and i also remember saying to the guy's wife that was on i said that tire looks like it's a little low we're boarding the plane she's like you're right that fucking thing hit <laughs> boom that thing hit and we ba <laughs> he he banked around bounced it and then started slowing it down and it's only so long this runway and yeah. then you fall off of it there's a rock cliff and you're right back into the water <laughs> i'm not fucking lying to you about any of this I'm never doing this fucking thing. And we gig. land, and everyone, including these people that do this shit for a living, they are fucking terrified. Mm. We all get off. All anyone can talk about when they take the mic is, holy shit, that fucking flight. Like, right, everyone right, got right. up and said something. <laughs> it was not hack at all because everyone was still. So we asked those guys, like, how is that? They're like, that's the worst flight we've ever had in like 20 years. Because like you're on it. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm the fucking you, cooler. Yeah, yeah, I'm never flying with you. So we go to control tower when we're flying. Because now I'm scared to death to fly back. I am fucking. This is the worst flight to fly back because right. you're going on that same fucking plane. When you go that night, you it's, just do a no, gig you and you go do back? one night and then you fly back the next day. Next so we go day. up to the control tower and he shows us the runway. And basically he's like, it's broken up into an A, B, C, D. You know, you're supposed to normally land around B and then you skid or slow down and around D you stop. And he's like, you guys hit right here around C and this is where you stop right here. He's like, you almost went off the fucking thing. And we're like, holy, holy shit. shit. And then I was just terrified to fly back. Terrified. Why would he tell you I that shut shit? my shade. I didn't even want to look out or anything. I was like, and when you go in, when you fly over the rocks, there's these um, crashed little uh, like Cessnas and shit, like single engine planes are wrecked on the rocks and everything. You see that as you fly into this. Fuck, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> the haunted runway? They you didn't make see, it. I'm trying you see to see remains. They didn't make it to the <laughs> runway. <laughs> I like how they don't clean it up. They're like, ah, fuck it. Holy Leave shit. Leave it, man. They lost. Well, that is a perfect segue to lead into what I asked you, what you wanted to come talk about. You said failure. That failure. is perfectly uh, a good segue to go into failure. So tell me some, talk, talk to me about failure. Like, I would say, what's one of your earliest moments outside of, outside of the business? Yeah. In life, my yeah. earliest failure? Um, I would say some of my, er like my earliest fear was like not initially getting into colleges that I wanted to get into after high school. And that was embarrassing. Why? Cause people got, cause people could get in and I was a, I was a mediocre student. I was like a B minus C average, you know, I was floating my that's way through. Me. I was a 3.0. Yeah, man. That's I played it. sports. That That's all I gave a yep. fuck about. So like, I just, I was never, it, it turned out that I was a much better college student cause it was classes I gave a fuck about. Right. I yes. was, I, I graduated with honors in college, which is ironic. Where'd you graduate? Arizona state bitch. So play, ah. But you know, I mean, you know, listen, the Harvard of the, of the desert dog. <laughs> <laughs> is that what they call it? They call, no, they call, they call it the, the, the Havarti of the desert, man. The, the cheese of the desert. Shit is, Shit is so easy to get, no, but, but I didn't brother. get into a few schools that I kind of wanted to get into and it kind of, it brought, it, it, it really kind of like, it was more embarrassing, right? Nobody know, no, nobody knew, but 
it's more embarrassing because people are getting into schools and all your friends. All I want to do, well, and all I want to do is go to California, but I couldn't afford California schools. There was no way my parents were going to give me money for that. So Arizona was the place I was like kind of targeting to go anyway, but I didn't get into you know other places that I kind of had my heart on. And what was your goal? Which one did you want? Well, well, you're Chicago, right? Did yeah. you want Northwestern or did you want to get the fuck out of couldn't Chicago? Couldn't get into Northwestern. No way. U of I. What's e, that? Could, University of Illinois. Iowa? Oh, yeah. Illinois. But Northwestern couldn't, you can't get into Northwestern. That, I mean, that's, that's, if you're, that's if you really have your career mapped out. I, dude, I wrote a letter when I was in high school that said I wanted to become a comedian. I put it up on Instagram. I told Rogan this a couple of weeks ago. But I knew from the jump that's what I wanted to do. But I also wanted to go to college and have that college experience because everybody was going. I was the same way. But I but I didn't give a fuck about what I was going to do in college. I was like, I'm just going to be a comedian. Like Did I you knew test I, well in the SATs? No, I'm so dumb, dude. I'm so dumb I, at standardized I, I, tests. I, honest to God, I, te I was horrible. I'm I've garbage. Been, I, if anybody knows for real, I've been researching how to look up my old SAT scores. I'm trying to see. Can you not find them online? It's got to be yeah, out there. Yeah, they're public record, They right? keep saying they are, but I don't think they're public. You have to pay for them, but they're yours, but right. I don't know. They're available to have. Yeah. I think my, well, we did, well. Because we I had a couple community colleges like, I don't know if, we, if you're ready for <laughs> us. <laughs> what is that? What is it? What is that? 1,600? What? The SATs. 1600 is, I think that's perfect. At Isn't least that it? it used to be. I think so. See, we don't, we, in, in Chicago, it's ACTs. You can do both. Right. We had that too. We, ACT was 32. God, I don't know. Can they look shit up? I was going to say, I don't want to, I don't want to fuck ACT? up. They can look AC, it up. ACT is, they're, I, they're I think it's 32. Research. I think it's 32. And the first time, I, so this is, this, you know, you know, a, a dumb guy says this. I'm not good at standardized tests. I'm not good at standardized tests. I'm not either. I, I'm, it's so bad for, it's so bad. Other shit, I'm I'm great at. There's stuff that I'm so great at school wise, but scholastically, dude, fucking, I do a test and I was like, whatever. So I think the first time, if it is out of 32, 32 or 35, I think the first time I got like a 23. Woof. I mean, garbage, absolute trash. And I took it two more times to get my score up, and I don't know what I ended up with, 28 or something like that. Ended up being good, but I, I had I'll, to take it again. I can't remember. I know mine was not great. Um, I think I, I might have been right around like a 900. It was not great. What is it? What's average? I don't know. A thousand? Over a thousand, I feel like, is average. Or like that's the yeah. litmus test to get you somewhere, at least that number. They give you 800 to sign your name and shit. I think that's for, <laughs> for real. I think they give you like 600 to sign your fucking name just to show up for the fucking thing. But I took it again a second time and it only went up 10 points. And I was like, fuck this Damn. at this point. That I, can't afford, I can't afford college anyway. I'm going to community college. Right. I don't even know why I bothered all prepping how many, that How many shit. did you go to? One, one school and that's it? No, I went to community college. And when I got my AA from community college, I came here to go to Cal State Northridge in 94. Shout out Northridge. And the morning I woke up, getting ready to get into my 1990 Honda Civic with original rims and drive this great country was martin luther king day 94 and the northridge quake that was, that was the destroyed earthquake. the school wow destroyed the school damn that's nuts you were out here for that shit i came out i still drove here like a fucking idiot and <laughs> did a semester <laughs> at college at northridge on two classes one on a sidewalk and the other one was just under a tree every fucking day <laughs> They had nothing. Oh, get I was homeless. You? I was supposed to be. I, I thought I'd meet people. I was trying to get the college experience. Like, yeah. I'm like a quad mate. So I'm going to meet some people. Uh -uh. Nope. Nah. The whole school's destroyed. We're the second class is under the Tahunga Free Bridge or some <laughs> shit. You're like, we're meeting under the bridge at 2.30. <laughs> we'll see y'all bum camp at 2.30. <laughs> That's what it was like for real. So my, my, my college experience was was phenomenal. That was, I mean, I, you know, no, I had, I had too much fucking fun. But anyway, go, going back. Like a lot of the failure, failures I experienced in school were like um, in that world of like, I didn't, I wasn't a jock. I wasn't a nerd, but I, I was friends with all the above, yeah, me too. but I wanted to fit in a little bit more into like, you know, I, I had a click to go to college with, didn't have it. And so that fucked me up a little bit. Like it maybe it bummed me out. Now, Where was everyone in your, like all your Most friends. people stay in the Midwest. They do. And it's not like, like I really, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, whatever, in, Indiana, there. Illinois, Ohio State, all the Midwest schools. And some of those schools I couldn't get into, you know, so it's, it was, I didn't want to stay, but you want to know you could. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to know you have access even and if And that you, bothered you? Yeah, fuck, it fucks you up a little bit because you feel dumb. You feel stupid. You're like, what am I, am I fucking dumb? Like, am I, am, am I just an idiot? Because I'm smarter than that guy, but it's just, some people are so good at school, but they're idiots in public, you know? Yeah. 
I had so much more street smart than I had school smart. Me too. And that bothered the shit out of me because I was always like, how can these fucking morons that I know do well in school? They're they're idiots. But my whole thing was I was so distracted all the time in school anyway. I never. I, I, it was so hard to pay attention. It was so bo- it was so boring. I was so fucking bored. But also as a young boy. 14 to 17, you're just a walking erection yeah, full of yeah, testosterone. Yes. And I don't give a fuck about, we got letters in math now? What the fuck yeah, are we talking yeah, about yeah. over here? Like, get these the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Where's numbers math? I want, that's the only math I like. <laughs> I was so bad at, <laughs> I was so bad at just simple shit. I just hated it. But complex stuff I, I was drawn to. If it was more like, if it was, if it was, you know, like science was sexy as fuck to me. Like science was cool, but, but, it, certain air avenues I was so garbage at I just couldn't wrap my head around it probably because math was the root of it I fuck, I always hated fucking math you know you're gonna use it when you when when do I use math I, I I really believe I never use math I have only outside of basic math yeah I've never used trig or no. any of that why shit. would you wh- wh- when no. when would you need it I already know I cannot help my daughter with math I'm gonna <laughs> like you're just gonna have to talk to your mom or I'm gonna have to pay for a tutor because I'm not fucking and I don't know how to do that when I was working with my uh, stepson, his homework, that Common Core shit, mm. I have no. I just looked at it. And I was like, "Look, I was bad at the original shit. I have no idea how to do this shit." Good That's luck. funny because my, I think my parents played it off like they just wanted me to figure it out on my own. But it was just because they were they didn't know. You know what I mean? They were like, "You need to finish it." And I know when I'd leave the room, my dad would be like, "I don't know what the fuck that no, shit is. I have no idea what that shit is." I used to find, you know, they used to have the key in the back of the book in a lot of them, mm-hmm. so I would just write the answer and like, "You need to show your work." You're like, uh, like uh, you want to video me flipping to the back of the fucking book? <laughs> that's how I fucking got this answer. <laughs> now kids can just do it online. They can just cheat online. Well, that's what he does. He'll be like, yeah. how do you spell? And then it spells it for you. I'm like, you're not. You, yeah. 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 But, uh, but think about it like this, though. How, some of that stuff is so unnecessary. It's so antiquated. We, we, we actually don't need some of it. I, I, like, I'm amazed. I hate when someone's like, the system is in place, the system works. You're like, yeah, but times change. So they have to keep up with the times. And also not for every person. Yeah, it's not the same. I, no. I think that's the most fucked up thing is school. When I was, when I was young, young, I was so bad. Uh, I would get kicked out of school, kicked out of classes because I was either fighting or I was disruptive. You were fighting? Oh, yeah. What do you, talk, tell me about that. Oh, my God. Every, Why? Why were you so angry? Every kid that would talk, if, if a kid talked shit, I'd hit him. And are we talking about elementary? Or are we in middle at this point? What what age? Both up until junior, up until almost high school. So were they picking on you, or it was some, just... sometimes would be picking on me if I was young? Why? The redheaded thing. You did get picked on for that? Not really. It was that's. I, I'm not trying to like project like that was. But the, here and there, you would get those people once in a great while by someone older than me. And that was a trigger for you. I hit him right in the face. Punched him as hard as I could. <laughs> I mean, right away. I wouldn't even think twice. I swear to God, it's so unfortunate. I told, I told. <laughs> Who's it unfortunate for? I think I know who it's well, yeah, unfortunate Yeah, yeah, for. not for me. <laughs> Ang- bad anger issues. But also, also, that's, I talked about it on, uh, on uh, what, on Callan, on Fighter and the Kid. That's, this nickname, Slugger Santino. They, they, this elementary school teacher said that because I wouldn't stop fighting people. Because I, I, I would get mad at somebody for either, if they were making fun of me, not picking on me, like joking about me. Mm-hmm. And... I would just I would just take out all my anger on him. I just hit him. Where does that like, anger come from? I, I don't know. You come from a broken home, divorced parents. Yeah, but my parents split when I was one. Before I was, I didn't know them together. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I didn't have that experience. But my dad was in and out of my life all the time. But that wasn't really the root of it. Like I don't think that was it. I think it was just um, in and I don't out know. of your life. Why? What did he do? Prison. For real? Prison. Prison. I see, I don't know when you're joking with me or not. I swear you? to God. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> what? Are you comfortable talking about Totally, that? yeah. I don't give what a fuck. What did he do to go to prison? Drugs. Selling drugs, or? Both. Selling, buying, being involved right, with wait. pieces of shit. Let's start. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Your mom and dad split at one. Before. Well, you're I, a one. Right, right, do you have right any siblings? One. Is there anyone that not precedes from them. you? Not from them. No. Okay. I'm the only one from them. Not from them. But other. But I have halves. I have half siblings. Okay. But I'm the only one from them, from my, from my biological mom and dad. So when do you, at what age do you remember meeting your dad? Shit, maybe like, I remember like maybe three or four. I remember some, I remember going to his apartment when I was three or four and watching Bears games. Like that, I kind of remember, but not much. He was like a figment of my imagination as a kid. He, he, he drove, a, I talk about, I used to talk about it on stage. He drove a, a, a Firebird. Remember Pontiac Firebird? Yeah, yeah he drove a Firebird. Firebird. He had a million of them. 
He had a, he traded would trade him out in and out different colors. Um, but he loved cocaine. He lo- <laughs> he loved cocaine. Doing it and selling it. Everything, all the above, and then just just unruly people that he was surrounding himself with. I'm sure they were involved in criminal activity as well. You know what I mean? Just just to get just he had a lot of protection because my grandfather's uh his dad my yeah my his father's people were you know dialed in they were people yeah yeah <laughs> they were people but he would go to prison he went to prison in cook county yeah cook county prison <laughs> this is how i knew my my grandfather had people first of all my grandfather worked at the dog track at the not the oh, horse track at the dog track <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> there goes and the not, rabbit. Not greyhounds either. Like no, no, just, just, just loose dogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just loose neighborhood animals. <laughs> but he would. But he would. Uh, <laughs> but I, I knew. But I would go see him. I'd go watch amateur boxing sometimes uh, at the at the greyhound track. It was called. It was called um, Maywood. Maywood's the dog track. I don't think it's around anymore. Arlington is the horse track. But um, he would. He, here's how I knew his friends all had hilarious TV nicknames. I only when I was older like his best friend was this guy Joe the Hat Joe the Hat always had nice cars brand new Corvette brand new Porsche you know like yeah. I was like this motherfucker's a magician what does he do you know and then I got old enough to realize like people these guys don't have jobs they kick it all fucking day so what did he do to make money and are they younger at the time well they were probably no I mean 50s, they, they were probably in their 50s or 60s right they weren't like 30s or 40s but it was always it was always so mysterious, and then I knew all these guys with all these bullshit nicknames like Joe the Hat, you know, the Marksman. I was like, who are these? The Marks. <laughs> I think I know who. He yeah. Is. <laughs> but you think it's you as a kid, you don't the Marks. You, yeah, you just don't wrap your head around all that stuff. You don't understand what any yeah, of that shit is. Normal. It's yeah, it's normal. Yeah, it just sounds like normal until shit. You realize right. when that shit is not normal. Right. right, and then you realize what the hat. Mom, I'm going to the Marksman's house. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, you're not. No. So that's how I knew my grandfather had friendlies, you know, and so my dad and his brother were up to no gooders and they were always in trouble, always in trouble. Both great athletes, both like had good opportunities to do things and, and just couldn't stay out of fucking trouble. And then my, then my dad's brother uh, went to Vietnam and got addicted to the horse like so many of those dudes did. And then uh, had a tough time with his life until he got clean, found Jesus. That's what took it. He found Jesus hard. And in then prison? Found, Apparently Jesus lives on death row. Yeah, a lot he, of them he, find him. Yeah, there. he does. Yeah, yeah he yeah. does. He's in cell block too. Yeah. But he but yeah, and then he got his life so clean together. But my whole my whole childhood with Are you my close dad, with your uncle now? No. He's no. in Florida. But he found God. He works with this woman. I mean, he works at this church and and his life is good. He he's living a nice, good, clean life. But my old man, you know, we had this weird up and down relationship of like just was in and out of prison, so didn't really know him. Did you ever go visit him in prison? Never, never. Never. But he would call all the time. This is my favorite. Back in the day when they used to prison collect calls, you know? Yeah. He'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like, you have a collect call from Cook County prisoner inmate for 8527. You know? It would say his number. Yeah, it would say the number. And then it would go, and then it would go um, from, dude, and it would be a chance for them to leave their name, mm-hmm. right? But my mother would never, she would be angry that I accepted it. So she didn't want me to accept the call. She's like, I'm not paying for that motherfucker to pay, you know, like, Fuck right, him. you got to pay for you to talk to your own kid. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. So she would deny it sometimes. So he knew that it would get denied. So he would leave his message in the time when he's supposed to leave his name. So it's supposed to just be like, you have That's a collect call from, yeah. from Rick, you know? Yeah. So it'd be a, <laughs> he would leave a collect call. It'd be like, you have a collect call from a Cook County inmate, da, da, da. And then they go, from? And they go, hey, what's up? It's, it's me. I just want to say hi. And, I love, <laughs> and it would cut it off every time. <laughs> So listen cut up. that new shit with them some bacon soda listen they're coming by at noon to... <laughs> it was just so fun it was just such a funny but so i never so i never had like i i, I if we're trying to tie it all back in i never had like anger because of him or anything like that because my stepfather was is a the greatest dude that's ever lived oh like, so you did have someone step in mm-hmm. he came in yeah he, how old uh they met when i was i don't know i think it was like three maybe they met and started dating when i was young three or four and then, um, and, and he's the greatest dude, so he's a great father figure. But it's just, I don't, I don't think I had like anger and resentment towards him. I just had a lot of pent up fucking anger. And maybe it was just in the blood. My whole family's like that. Just, well, you got good blood. It's we, just already ad- yeah, yeah. <laughs> we already know that. I think it's that. just attitude shit. I think it's just, we come from that world of asshole, busting balls, blue collar, chip on your shoulder, yeah. angry. You know, like I, I was talking the other week about my grandfather used to make fun of rich people all the time. He, his angle on things was so genius that he was like, you know, he'd be like, hey, why do you want to go to a fancy restaurant anyway? The, the lights are dark. You can't even see the fucking food. Like that's how like a poor person jokes about the rich. Right. 
to make to make it sound like they have it worse. Right. But I think that was always kind of the culture. You know, yeah. it, was, it was always that proud of who we are, proud of our thing. But I guess you just, it's just a, t- a weird toughness that some Chicago people have for some fucking reason. I had it for some reason in spades. I was just an angry motherfucker. And at what age does your, or has he, is your dad, is your dad still alive? He's alive. And has he settled down at all? Oh, he's been clean for a long time. So what long, age in your time. life is he got he too old to do drugs? Out. You know, he says, yeah. he was saying, he was like, I got too old to do drugs. What age did we? What age did you like finally connect with your dad? Um, You know, in and out, like I would connect with him a little bit in my college years, a little bit. And then, um, then after college, it's always been in and out, in and out. Because it's always been like, you know that song? Um. The cats in the cradle and the yeah. silver. Remember that shit? Yeah. That's like, that's exactly like my life. I mean, because he says like, when are we going to get together? And it's like, oh, one day, you know, we will. We'll have a good time. And then he talks about in the song. It's such a sad fucking song. I think song. he even says when your mom picks up the fucking collect call. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to connect? <laughs> when mom accepts my fucking phone call, son, we'll get together then. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but that's the but that's i think we just we we've always been you know it's always been like you know we're getting real serious uh it's always been in that's and out okay but no no, no it's just been my choice to be like uh my own man now this is weird to say but i'm an i'm honest about it i don't care it, it, we're just we're two men that live in the you know what i mean like it's hard to that's not your dad it's hard to think about it like your dad yeah because we didn't have that kind of connection so he's just a family member. He's like a, a man, you know? I mean, it would fucking shatter his soul to know that's the truth. But I think that's, that's just an honest, I just, we don't have, we never had that connection, you know? Like you never had this like, there's love. There's gotta be love because it's blood and that's just forever. But there, I never had, I never had this like ethereal bond thing because we were on so different, we we're on two different worlds. And now even more so I'm on two different worlds, you know? I live fucking, Third, three thousand miles away, right? And I have my own life, my own family. I'm trying my own career, and like you're, it's it's hard. It's hard enough to stay in contact with my mom. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's just those things take over. So is he still in Illinois, Chicago? Hell or? yeah, they don't fucking leave. Those people don't leave. So how many people left Baltimore? Nobody. I mean, None. they moved out of the city, but yeah, they but haven't left they don't the area. leave. There. No, yeah, you don't do all it. Still there. Right, they all live in the fringe area. Has of he Chicago. come to see any shows in Chicago? Yeah, he came up to Madison, Wisconsin, with my grandfather um to go he's seen a, he's seen a few shows he saw me do my showtime special the, like, he, listen if you wouldn't mind not selling some merch we're trying to move some product <laughs> right, to show. right at the merch table i'm like what is who, who's that what is that what is that you get some of andrew's shirts and we got pure cut cocaine over here y'all <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that was i think it was you know and he's made good on his life did he like did show. they like the show yeah, as far as i know i can't really you can never really tell you don't talk you don't hang out a little after to go to dinner a little or bit something. no we, we we do sometimes we have before but um, we Did had your a, mom talk to him at all? No, no, no. They ain't straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it what is. What about your not, stepdad? Does he does he get it with your dad? Do they? Does your dad resent him, or no. does he thank him for stepping in? No, I don't. I don't think they have any relationship whatsoever. Nothing. But it's but there's no hate at all because he knows my stepdad is 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 the is the guy. You know what I mean? There's no yeah. like, there's no fuck you. There's no. You know what I mean? Like you, you, it's it's more like polite, cordial. Like when he would come pick me up when I was younger, you know, once in a great while. You know, I'd be like, "Hey, okay, hey." You know, it was just real polite shit. It was never like this battle, because it's not like that. That battle happens when it's someone's like, "Ah, with my ex wife." You know, right? That they, that my mom isn't my dad's ex wife. That's it's not like yeah, that. Yeah, it was only what one year. Well, they were together for like th- three years, okay, three. Ma- married. I don't even know how long before that, a couple of years before, but whatever, maybe a five year total. That's how little I know, but it's different. You know what I mean? Like when you, when you sever marriage from, from that kind of world of like, because of going to jail and being up to no fucking good, it ain't like you left me. It's like, nah, man, you left us. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's, I think it's more, I think, right. I think he knows that shit. <laughs> it's not like, it's not like he has a blinded sensibility of what really happened. He's smart enough to understand. But, you know, I think the the things that I took away from it are, are, I probably have his attitude, I have his anger, I have his, like, he's just brash, big dude, big, angry, was always mean. But the things I took from him that were positive were, like, he was phenomenal with people, and I always admired that. He could talk to anybody, was scared of nobody. And I mean that in, in like, a friendly way and also in a um, racial barrier, socioeconomic way, right? He would go to... A contractor he would go to probably the worst neighborhoods we'd go to the toughest toughest parts of chicago and he i'd come with him on jobs sometimes and he they loved him 
like in, in these communities where, you know, white people aren't supposed to go. If we want to talk real talk, you know, people don't want to talk about white boys aren't supposed to go over there. And he would go and people, hey, what's up, Rick? People would love him because he was a man of the people. And I always admired that, that he, anybody he could fuck with. I don't care what, what right. skin color, how much money they had. It, it wasn't just about rate. It was just like he, he could fuck with anybody. So I loved that about him. And I think I took some of that as far as like receiving people. That was a, a, a positive from a negative. Yeah. I could, I, I don't give a fuck who you are, where you're from. I have friends that are all different colors and races and socioeconomic classes. And that's, I, that's something that he always made me, I was so surprised. Old black women fucking loved him. They were like, he was this, just this comforting, confident, very confident, n you know, he, no one could stand in his way from like getting work. I think that was a, an a, admirable quality. If you only transfer that into something else, you know what I mean? But um, those things I took from him, you know, per, strong personality, strong minded, strong will, not weak. You know what I mean? Things that like I see in other people that I admire when someone's a hard worker that they're like, doesn't give a fuck when they get hit, when they get down. And it's like, I'll just get up again. Fuck it. Hit yeah. me again. So that was always, that was a positive thing for me, especially when it came to like sports relationships, this business, you know, you can't be a pussy and try to get into this game. No, you learn fast. You're like, Oh, you just kind of have to be tough as fuck to like deal with shit all the time. That's, that's why, you know, you've got all these people online that just want to shit on you and say the worst fucking things possible. Yeah. But for me, I'm like, my own mother looked right in my face and told me she hated me. I was a loser. I was like, do you Damn. really think your fucking comments have <laughs> yeah, any bearing yeah. on my fucking yeah. day? <laughs> Good luck. No, bro. I'm still dealing with some shit. shit. Okay, what? your little fucking sprinkles of, oh, you suck, Sickler. I hate your laugh, sir. I don't give a the fuck. fuck. <laughs> By the way, that's your mom commenting on some of those. <laughs> 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 uh, but you know what's so funny is well, I was talking to Kreischer about this shit that that he was talking about some guy that was trolling him a little bit. And I said, you know, you know what the crazy thing is? Anybody who says something fucked up online, it's funny that we, we sometimes we hear it because all the, the positive shit is so much nicer to like in, 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 engage with fans that are like wanting to be a part of this fun world. Right. And the haters, okay, whatever, man. People are oddly jealous. I know that's a cheap way, but you're, you're obviously jealous that someone's having fun without you. It's kind of like this strange childish complex of like, fuck these motherfuckers. Like, why, bro? What does, is that really what, what is that really what you want to be like you you want to hate on shit just because but but also uh, successful people don't have time to do that shit yeah yeah yeah. they're yeah, yeah. busy yeah. being successful yeah. or trying to be successful right. you hear jay-z you hear jay-z shitting on people all day like he didn't have any time to do it. he's like i'm I getting got, on uh, comments, comments like, i don't know about this this shit ain't any good i'll tell you something <laughs> meek mill you know get the fuck out of here so, so I think, I think, so we're talking to Kreischer and he said some guy was trolling him really hard and it was pissing him off, like really pissing him off. It was getting personal. It was weird. And I said, you know what's crazy about that though? It's like, you think you can out shit talk me? You, th I'm in here. I'm in here all the time. You don't even have the key, motherfucker. Like, you can't get behind the door also, of how crazy this is. you think I haven't thought what you're saying? Yeah, that's I what I'm saying. That about I, I can do yeah, this better than you can. Way worse. In fact, that. sometimes when people when people say something negative, I troll them with something even more negative that they could they can't even hit about me. That it's like, good luck, bitch. You'll yeah. never get there. Right. Top you'll, that one. Yeah, you'll never get yeah. this deep. So I think half of the time I I fuck around with it. Sometimes I, Rogan's always like, don't engage, don't engage. I'm like. Joel will say Rogan will say some things to me sometimes where I, I think I gotta he, imagine he can't engage the amount of fucking he doesn't at all. comments he but he can't. also forgets he forgets how famous he is right and how not famous I am <laughs> so yeah. sometimes he'll be like he'll go <clears throat> like he'll, he said to me what did he say the other day he was like he because we had moved and he was like um he's like you got to get yourself in a gated community you know to you know you, you got to do that at some point and I was like <laughs> I'm not some, you, dog. Yeah, right. I'm not you, dude. <laughs> I got a chain link fence around my <laughs> yeah, fucking yard. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's so, but he's so famous, I think, because he disconnects from those worlds. Like he doesn't read hating comments. He doesn't get into, but we have so much more fan engagement because we're at a more, we're at a, just a more ground level. You know, he's built such an empire. I think it's hard for him to know because he's always like, don't listen to that shit. Don't look at that shit. And you're like, well, I see it more than you because it's there more than you. You know what I mean? Like it's right. just there for for him. It's like it's a flood. For us, it's you know it's a stream. 
Right. You know, it's like I'm fortunate though. My fans, even coming from the crab feast, the ones that have come to the honeydew, I have really good fans. They're yeah. good people. Yeah. They're smart. They're intelligent. They say shit like thank you for coming to Edmonton. It's like thank you for coming to my city yeah. and doing shows. You know, you get that handful of fucking idiots or whatever, but I think for the most part, people that talk shit are usually they usually really like your shit. You know, they they usually I posted something the other day about <clears throat> a guy at the comedy store. I was on one. I was in a weird mood. And I was shitting on this dude a little bit because he was having no fun. He was like this, you know, like, like a fucking, like a brat. And so I was fucking with him. I was like, what's your fucking deal, man? You're not having any fun. I saw you not laugh once at Allie. Like you, re are you is this that bad of a night? And um, whatever. Then I, I joked with him a little bit, had some fun. They laughed it off. And then I bought him a round of drinks. I was like, I'm going to buy you guys drinks so your night gets better. Okay. The next morning I got, you know, a message and the dude was like explaining why they were in a bad mood. And he was like, we had a tough night. Shit was bad for us, yada, yada, yada. You completely changed the night around. You bought us a round of drinks. And when you went through on it, not just said it, he's like, it like dynamically changed our whole night and our whole life. So it was like, yeah. And I really laughed at the other comedian. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Ian Edwards was good. <laughs> you were garbage. <laughs> but well, thanks but, for the drinks. But, but thank you. But thank you for it. Yeah, Ian appreciated it too. But it was like one of those things where you're like, oh yeah, they weren't. You don't know why people are mad or upset or, or, or what they're, what's fueling their hate or their sadness or their whatever. I think people forget people have issues. So you don't know. I don't know. But I, I imagine most people that are hating, they don't really fucking hate, man. They just have some shit that they're going through or some fucked up shit in their life that's not. Oh, yeah. That's all it really is. Right. You know? So tying it into your theme, I think through failure and through heartache or heartbreak, I think all that stuff needs to, I think we all need to keep it in the front of your mind. It's like, dude, you don't know what the guy at fucking Starbucks is going through. You know, he's an asshole to me when he served me my coffee. It's like, dude, maybe his fucking brother has cancer. Right. You know, you don't know that, that shit. shit. It's so hard. To, it's hard to keep it in the front of your head. But that's also maturity that you eventually have to reach as well. Totally. Because that's an internal thing and you've got to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. But I don't let it go too long. No. Like, Just, I know some people have cancer too. Quit yeah. being a fucking <laughs> asshole. You know what I'm saying? I got prostatitis, bro. <laughs> give me my fucking latte. <laughs> that's my shit. <laughs> So what, speaking of this industry, what sort of failures have you had? Like, cause there's a lot of people that'll say some ice cold shit to you too in this industry yeah. and oh, do yeah. things to you. What sort of failures have you had in this industry that uh, you that, wanna share? You're yeah, comfortable I mean, sharing? I mean, I've had, no, I mean, I'm comfortable with most. I just told you my whole fucking story about my father in I had prison. I dig it out of you though. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you just throwing that at me when, you, we, I, when my dad was in prison. I was like, don't fucking say anything else. We'll talk when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think the 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 failures of the business are um, I think I it's funny to like pinpointing one thing is tough but I think it's an amalgamation of things that kind of come that come together that re that really feels like you're beaten down like not getting um, you know like not like not getting Montreal the, the the ton of times that I did go out for it was such a big hard hit for me because you see your peers doing it and that bothers you Montreal if people don't know just for laughs is a comedy festival but that fucked me up for a while when I was young. I never got it. You I've never did. I've showcased, I want to say, four or five times. And I well, now you're so far beyond when you would, quote yeah. unquote, get it. It doesn't yeah. matter anymore. But when you're young and you really want it, and that's something that's just, it's so powerful, man. It's like, why don't I, like, I mean, recently, you know, I'm trying to do a new hour and I, I can't have any, no fish are biting, you know, no one's biting, no one's biting the bait. So that's, that's tough. Like, because I have a good hour. I know I have this this thing I really want to present before it goes dry to me, before it gets stale. Right. But I haven't had a lot of fish bite on that. And that's kind of a tough, you know, your failures are all relative, right? When someone's like, I hate when somebody's like, why would they care? They have everything in the world. It's like, no, man, at, fucking, at every level there is, every fucking lily pad has, you know, has its own fucking weak side. So like people just don't see that. They just think, oh, it looks so, they look so much nicer. They're more set up. They have more shit. But, you know, multiple times, I've had I had a I had a show with NBC that literally never went and that was that was probably one of my what biggest heartbreaks. One? Ugh. We wrote we wrote this thing about me and my family working at the dog park together. Seriously called the track. We we wrote this thing up. And NBC after I didn't get SNL, another big failure when I got That's right. you yeah, were, when you I got were, nicked. You were yeah. Right there. yeah, yeah, I tested I tested so, and wait, went out there. Go and, to that. How far talk, walk us cuz I'm just an SNL fan from yeah. childhood. Yeah, me no me too. I still watch it. The whole process and everything. Yeah, I just watched Sandler's the other night again well, too. Well, I've talked about it a, a lot. I don't want to exhaust it, but I but what That's I fine, I, but I went out and I tested again. Um This is in front of Lauren and yeah. everything. This is the this is the if you watch the um like the Best of Will Fair on all that. This is that moment. On stage, yeah, testing And, and ha you can't see anyone. 
Not really. Right? They're down below. They're but it's kinda, only it's, a couple of them, right? Yeah, three You're or doing four. Doing all this for three or four people, yep. not a live buzzing room. Nope. People at a at a fucking at a table at like a business table, but they laughed, which was good. You know, the old rumor that they don't laugh. I was like, no, they laughed, which was phenomenal. But um, yeah. And then I did. I, and I went went to L.A. Then I got a phone call to come back to go have lunch with Lauren or whatever, or dinner or something. And I flew back. And then. Still ended up not getting it. it. Was a face rejection though. At least he was. He was. He told you there at that. Yeah, dinner. he was really polite about it. I mean, he told me in so many words. It was more like, "You're not the right puzzle piece for this puzzle." That's really in so many words. That was it. And I was. I respected it because it was kind of like, you know, he was saying he was like, "Oh, you're talented, but you're you're talent. You're definitely talented enough to be on the show. It's just I don't think it fits right now." So I, so you know, but that and then I went to NBC and I was like, "I have this show idea." And since because the SNL thing, I think they were like, "All right, let's fuck with this dude." Yeah. And we had this track, this, we wrote this thing. We loved it. It was so, I, I was so into it. Then they paired us with these other dudes. And I was like, okay, this is okay. Maybe this has got some movement. And then like, and then I hear rumors that like the president's changing. Like there's going to be a new president. And I was like, okay, maybe this is, we'll see who's still, we'll see. Well, we're still in good shape. Right. And then they were like, what if we put it somewhere else? I was like outside of the track. And they're like, yeah, I don't think a dog track is entertaining. And I was like, it's the whole show. You've never <laughs> fucking seen anything. Like I know. That. Still. I know. No, I know. I was like, that's not, but it's, it's almost like saying you know, that, that, you know, that's like saying the, the two broke girls, you know, if you were like, sweetheart, call Michael Vick and see if he wants a guest star. <laughs> we'll get this off the ground. <laughs> it was just, so, it was just, they were so counterintuitive to like everything that I thought was going to work. And we kept trying to, they kept trying to like fit new pieces in it. And then it, by the time it was over and it wasn't going to happen, it had changed to something totally different. You know what I mean? It was like, I don't know. I, the lead, it was me beca I became probably like a black guy, a blind black guy at a golf course. You know what I mean? It was, like, it was something absurd. I was like, what the fuck is this script, dude? It wasn't even, it, it wasn't even us anymore. It disappeared. So that was big. That one hurt a ton. That one hurt a lot because I really thought it was dope. And it was about my family. It was about addiction. It was, it was if Shameless was a, a real comedy, you gotcha. know? Yeah, Shameless yeah, yeah. is, is literally like, show. it's like, my Chicago family, right. trouble family, but I wanted to make it an honest sitcom comedy. Like, a, like how can we make that the funny version, you know? So um, that hurt because it's, I fucking really wanted it to go. I wanted to at least make the pilot. I was like, give me a shot to make this fucking pilot. And we never even got around to making the pilot. So that was, that's, that shit sucks. Cause you're like, fuck, we put so much effort and time. And, and then it gets you in a place where you're like, man, maybe I'm not that good of a writer. Man, maybe I'm not that good of a comedian. Man, maybe I'm not that good in the room. Man, I'm, all maybe of these I'm not things. that good. Period, yeah. yeah. It, it trickles down to you at the end of the night going, I guess I'm not that fucking good. Maybe they don't want me. So, which is bullshit. You know, you know in retrospect, you're like, well, they wanted you in the fucking first place. It just, things don't work. Things yeah. don't always work. But I've had that in my career a few different times. You know, I've been fucking cut out of shit. I've talked about that before too. I got been cut out of stuff where you're like, like what? I think I did great. I mean, just last year I did, I did the room with Franco and those guys mm -hmm. and I've totally got cut out. You want to have a nice laugh if the audience wants to have a laugh, go watch the room. I'm in like five scenes. I say nothing. Really? You're <laughs> yeah. on camera saying Oh yeah, nothing? bro. Oh my God. In the first two minutes, you see my fucking head. They couldn't cut around. <laughs> they left me in that bitch and I didn't say one word. In fact, I made a trailer and I put it up on Instagram for a while. I ended up taking it down, but I did like a super trailer of me and all my scenes. And from I, just that yeah. yeah and i was like i was like this summer andrew santino is in the room and it was like dramatic music and then at the end i was like but he doesn't say one fucking line i didn't say shit uh, I, I had said shit but i just got sliced i've got i've gotten sliced out of a bunch of different stuff um and i'm not throwing anybody under the bus i'm not being disrespectful it's just i just it's just that happens it happens sometimes but again, you get in your head. What what did I do? What did I do wrong? I thought I ripped. It's not that. It's there's a million factors that go into play into these things that you have zero control over, you know? So that's that the note of the business is none of it is fair and none of I it mean, makes sense. I mean, get that out of your head now. Don't even think you're coming into something fair. No, so yeah. If, 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 if anybody's looking to have to be a part yeah. of this world, not only is it not fair, but none of it's going to make sense. I think Life that's the isn't thing. fair. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. This is the the business is just a microcosm of what the world is like it's like it's confusing people have power that don't deserve it people don't get things that do deserve it people uh the, the those that are in control oftentimes have no fucking idea what they're talking about i mean that's the world that's the world in general of any business i say that to my my um i say that to my parents all the time because they're always like oh what do they like i'm like they're just like whatever business you work for it's the same thing that's right there's someone up there there's someone right here there's someone down there we're all trying to work to get up Th th there's the same kind of guy is in the business here that's in sales somewhere else 
and marketing here. It's, it's the same thing. It's just ours is more of a, there's more of a window on the business. America knows more about the business. So they, cause they see it and they hear about it. The zeitgeist and meta shit, you know, you shows like uh, entourage and you learn about the business. That doesn't happen with guys who are like fucking, you know, window blind salesmen. You don't know about that, but you don't know their competitive bullshit right. world. So, you know, I, I think, I think all, all that stuff kind of, Still waiting on these Venetians. Yeah, where are God these Venetians? Give me them drop blinds, please. I hate those fucking blinds. We never had those. Venetians? Uh, not, uh, no. What's the, the What are the long ones called that every fucking apartment in California? Um, uh, I don't know, man. Curtains? Is it vertical blinds, maybe? Yeah, probably vertical, vertical blinds. blinds. We I, never had we, those. I, I used to have slat. Well, no, because we have cold windows. weather, slat windows. Yeah, yeah, I had those. I never saw those, so I moved out uh -uh. here either. I was like, <laughs> air just comes through all the time? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, okay. I had, I used to have a lady's cats would come in my apartment because I'd leave them open and they could sleep they Sneak right in. Oh, yeah. yeah and I'm like, slat, blinds are, slat windows are bullshit. My, first, my second apartment out here had slat windows. And then in, in the winter, floor to ceiling too. If you don't ceiling. know, floor yeah, to floor floor ceiling. ceiling where wind comes and blows oh, shit yeah, in them and everything else. There's no screen on Even it. Even when you close it, it's yeah, not closed. It's not closed. That's what the slogan should be. Yeah. Slat windows. Even when you close, <laughs> they we're, never we're still open. Yeah. <laughs> we're still open. Heat gets out. If you're trying to heat your little apartment Forget up because it. it's cold, whoop, right out the window. Fuck that. And people are like, don't get cold. It's like California does get cold it at night. Too. In the winter, it gets fucking cold. And the heat would seep right, seep right out. I used to have two space heaters on either side of my fucking bed because my old room, there was no, no insulation is not even a real word to this motherfucker. They, I, don't, I don't know what they built it out of. Just scrap, scrap metal. <laughs> I don't think there was wood. I think it was Bunch just old metal. Stuffed yes. animals yeah, shoved yeah, in the wall. Bro, <laughs> this, it was so... <laughs> It was just old mattresses they just yeah, threw in there. Mattresses and shit. It was so cold in that fucking room. It was so fucking cold, and I would have to. And the windows out here, windows in California, got a paper thin. I mean, this is this is a window that in California. Is a window. And man, it would get so cold. I'd have a space heater on either side of the bed, and it would get nice in the middle of the night. And then if I'd wake up to piss, it, the foot of my bed would be fucking Antarctica freezing. I go my little the bones button, get take, all yeah. stiff and shit. Oh like, my god, god damn. take my little dick out and couldn't piss. A little tiny penis. I'd have to push it right back out of my body. Prostatitis. Got a prostatitis. That's what might have started it. Yeah. I'm going to blame that fucking apartment. <laughs> giving me trouble in my booty, man. What else? What other failures have you had? I mean... Uh, Let me ask you I think, this. Can yeah. you go I to... I think I did... Here, I'll give you one. Go ahead. I, you know, I, th I have... Not, it's, this, is, this is odd. I did last season of MTV's punk and it's one of my favorite stories. Get him, Russia. Well, get him, Russia. People still hit me. Well, I had. I Russia. thought it was going. I'll say this: it wasn't a failure, but I thought it was going to be a success. The show. Yeah, like I thought it was going to move my needle a lot. I you see. know, like I, I was excited. I was like, I'm, I wrote this thing. I'm one of the main cats on this thing. Like you this, were great on it. Thank you. It, I was like, it's the revival. I was so excited to like, you know, it gave. That was my first thing that gave me some hope. That I was like. People are going to see me. I wasn't just grinding doing stand-up every night. This is a way for them to like maybe get my name on a little part of the map. Not blow up, but I just wanted to, And it didn't yield almost anything. I mean, internally in the business, people saw it a little bit, but it was so non a non-factor. That hurt my feelings a lot because I put so much fucking work into that show. And right, I, wrote, I wrote almost every other bit that I was in. Really? Yeah. I wrote most of the bits for myself and I was one of the writers, so I wrote... I ended up helping to write all the bits that ended up on the air, but I just, it was that, that hurt a lot. It spent, I spent a lot of my life in that room working on that show, grinding it out. And then when it didn't do anything, it didn't, nothing happened. It was like the wind right out of my fucking sails. I was like, Oh shit. It hurt. It hurt. Cause we put so much work into it. And then I thought, is this going to be the rest of time? Is this how it's going to be? Cause it wasn't a failure quote unquote. Cause that, that word is, you know, that word is, it's ambiguous. What does that mean? What is a failure really? Um, but it just didn't go the way that I want. So I felt like I failed. I felt like it was a failure. I was like, God damn, I can't believe this didn't work. I thought that was going to be a way to boost me. But you just learn in the business. It's not a failure. Nothing is really a failure. It's just, it didn't work out you know, maybe the way you wanted, and then you try it again with something else, and then that does a little bit better. Hopefully, you stick with it. Yeah, yeah. You then have it just to. becomes my last project. Right, that's all it becomes. And Forget I don't want—I didn't want punk <laughs> no. to be my last fucking yeah. project. No, I mean my previous project. Yes, Put it that yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Not yeah. my yeah. last and final. I just no, mean. yeah, you, yeah. It just becomes a thing you did, and I have a slew of things that I did that, you know, are just things you did. I did a fucking show for Yahoo with Malin Ackerman and Tom Arnold. We did a Yahoo Sports show. And 
you want to talk about a real failure. That bitch didn't go anywhere. No one even knows it exists. I was going to say, I don't know. Yeah. I've ever heard that. Malin Ackerman, and Tom Malin Arnold. And Malin came on Comedy Jam. That's where I met her. She's a boss. I love her. But uh, I had no idea. Was that yeah. on TV or was it Yahoo. digital? Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo was going to okay. create two first television shows. Paul Feig had a show called Outer Space. Mm -hmm. And ours was the other one. It's called Sin City Saints. It was about a basketball team in Vegas, which, by the way, I remember. Yeah. Well, yeah. when I saw you in Austin, weren't you working with Baron Davis? Was that that yes. show? Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. BD was on mm -hmm. the show. Um, and it was sl Rick Fox. We had a slew of great people that came through to like do cameos and guest stars and didn't matter, bro. Dan Bacadal, who's an incredible fucking actor, was on the show. Toby Huss, who is like one of the great. You know who Toby Huss is? This, mm -hmm. this is how cool this dude is. He's done so much dope shit. Toby was, um, if you remember in uh, um, National Lampoon's Vegas Vacation. Okay. Okay. Do you remember when he buys the licensed Nick Papa Giorgio on the strip? Yes. That was Toby Huss, the guy that the guy was the Sinatra, the, the Sinatra impersonator. Oh, okay. When he's like, Chica the lights, kids, <laughs> see your name in lights. <laughs> and, and he gives him the fake license yeah. and he has to come back. So that that's Toby Huss, that actor. He's fucking incredible. He was also, um, do you remember the adventures of Pete and Pete? Do you remember that show? It was a Nickelodeon no. show many, many moons ago. But he was, Artie, the strongest man in the world. He was this incredible character. And I would have, you would never have guessed this is the dude. He changes shape, man. But um, the story that I think he told me was he was working Vegas and he was doing Sinatra impersonations. And they heard him and were like, You're, this, that's so good. We need you to do this thing. So he got that role, I think, through the Sinatra impersonations to do the selling the on the you know yeah. licenses underage light whatever he was saying it was so funny man he was so good but that show was stacked with people yahoo came out with these two shows did no fucking promotion i mean nothing i mean nothing dude we did we did promo in austin at south by southwest like what the fuck that's for the business you know what i mean that's all that's yeah, but we didn't do anything else there was no tv ads like where would they put them i guess but we were supposed to be on yahoo as their first television show launch and um, both of them, Paul Feig's show, No Love, our show didn't fucking exist. I don't even know if you can find that shit anymore. But that's, they just, Marissa Mayer, who I think was the CEO of Yahoo at the time, she was banking on it. And I think they lost enough money that that year that they just washed our shows. They didn't even try to like put them out for free. I mean, I put that shit on YouTube for free. Yeah. I don't know, people, I don't know. It's just, it, that was a big fucking failure. And, and that, that one didn't hurt that bad because I didn't I didn't know if it was going to be anything. I was like, oh, this is just a fun show. I get to go shoot in Vegas. I lived in fucking Las Vegas. but um, You did live there while you shot it? I lived in Caesar's Palace, dog. Oh, what's that like? It just sounds miserable. It's a nightmare. Right? Yeah. It's a fucking, it's a gun in your mouth. I, I fly in Friday. I'm getting the fuck out Sunday. That is more than enough So for Vegas me, for now me. that I've spent all this time in Vegas, the only advantage is good food. We, I ate they good do, food every yeah, night of my fucking agree. life. You know what I mean? Every night of my life, I was like, I that ate like a Caesar's the, Isn't that the, like one of the best buffets in the world? I yeah, think it's, that's the, it's the highest rank. But, yeah. I, but I mean, Nobu was in the basement. Fucking Gordon Ramsay had a place. Like all of these dope restaurants. So we got to eat that every day. That was an advantage. And partying a few nights was fun. But, um, but living in there was, now that I go back, if I fl I, here's how I do it. I fly in. Um, Another terrible flight out of Burbank garbage, into Vegas. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Yeah, that's I death. That's death. Oh, fuck, I, can't stand. I fly in early in the morning on like a Friday, party through the day, pool, then party all night, all into Saturday, and I leave Saturday afternoon. Mm. I don't ever stay another day. I don't. You don't need it. You don't want it. You don't need it. That's like thirty six hours. Yep. is Just a just enough. Of just, do, yeah, because you you lost money. I promise you yeah, lost money. You lost that city's not built on winners. Uh, uh I promise you lost no. money. That should the sign should say that. I promise you lost money on the way out. <laughs> it's, even when somebody's like, "Oh no, man, I came. I'm up. I'm. Up. I hate when guys say that. I'm up. You're, You're not, not up. Shit. Up. You're not up. You're shit. Because it matters overall, by the way. Not right. Just You're that up right now. Trip. Yeah. I'm up four hundred bucks. Next year you're gonna yeah. fucking go back and lose fifty five hundred. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. At the uh, dog track. <laughs> they, Do they have a dog track. They in should. They should definitely have. No, one. That's a, a degenerate. They got a hockey city. team and they're gonna get a fucking football team. And that was back when we did that Yahoo Sports show. People were like, "It's a fucking sports team in Vegas. It's a stupid concept. It's not gonna happen." They used to mock us. They were like, that's just such a dumb show idea. It's then not going to happen. a hockey team that goes to the Stanley Cup last year. I know. It's unbelievable. I'm so mad at that shit. We got the Raiders coming, what, in a year or two. Well, that's not going to make a difference. You know, that's not, nothing's going to happen out there. I don't know. They we'll give up their greatest player to the Chicago Bears. Man. I think a lot of people from, like, L.A., fans from other teams now have a reason to go to Vegas. I think that's Yes, it's help. another reason because they already love we Vegas. Drove people by that love Vegas. Looks fucking sick. Be amazing. Yeah. But it's also, like, it's just another reason for people to go there, spend more fucking money. Yeah. For Vegas, I can't believe they haven't had sports teams. Why wouldn't you after all these years? 
I mean, I know that the, I think the gaming restrictions were strict, but at some point they knew it's a market that has to exist. If you want more fucking people to go out to that goddamn desert and no, I'm not shitting on Vegas, but good God, that fucking place. People are bringing their babies to the casino. I'm like, who are these animals? <laughs> Bringing their fucking two-year-old child. Smoke all over the yeah, place man. and shit. The <laughs> fuck? Do the craziest shit. You see people's babies out at like two, three in the morning. Yeah. Wa awake ass mm -hmm. babies. Rolling like them through. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Oh, look, the flamingo. Yep. You're like, what the fuck? Get Go home, dude. Get the fuck out of here. It's a virgin hurricane. He's fucking <laughs> sucking on one of these. <laughs> Should we take the baby back? Yeah, take the fucking baby back home. Take the goddamn baby back. So I've experienced it all, man. I've had, I've had, I've had a lot of good things happen in my life, just as much as I've had ups and downs as far as this game goes. But I, like I said, maybe not failure. Failure as a word has a negative connotation. It just, it just didn't work. You know, things just don't work sometimes, and you just have to fucking roll with that shit. It, you have to get over it. Has there been anything in your life where it really almost broke you? Where, and I don't mean business. I, I mean just something where you're like, man, this is been the hardest thing i've had to deal with or or get over or yeah i think like um yeah i mean i've, I've had a lot of i mean a lot of, like weird deaths family deaths people that have passed away that just you know you think you're you maybe gonna lose your mind a little bit or when it's all crumbling when you're not when i was broke and not making any money and i was trying to get a new job and i was living on nothing and living in a fuck, I was living in a, um, uh, a, a divided off dining room. I mean, like, yeah. Here, out here? Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was struggling. And I think those moments are when you're like, those almost broke me. <laughs> Cause it just, uh, you know, you when, think. How old were you when you moved here? I moved here uh, the 4th of July in 2006. That's was, so weird. It's everybody, I, mine was Valentine's Day yeah, when I got here. Oh, really? It's always a specific day. Oh, yeah, I remember I, it I pulled too. in on Valentine's Day. In fact, day. moving into our new house, I was going through old, bins and i found the u-haul receipt i kept from the fourth wow. of july i don't know I, I i i'm usually not that guy yeah sentimental bullshit no but for some reason i must have kept it because it meant something but i moved here on the fourth of july in 06 and i was 22 or 3 and uh i was living i was living as i don't know man I, I was living how i could live i just had a couple of bucks i was getting random pickup jobs here and there i started to get worried um and then I finally landed another job that helped me out. Prior to that, did you have the moment with yourself of what the fuck am I doing? The any crying, breakdown, emotional, like I shit. Had, it's I, real. I'm out yeah. here. I'm by my fucking self, and this is fucking hard. I had nights and I had nights in that old house and that that first house up in L. A. That probably like, ruining that meal in that dining room. Those people <laughs> trying to find <laughs> the ghost of my cries. People can't even eat meals there now. I just want another goddamn biscuit. Will you <laughs> shut the fuck up? God damn, ruining my fucking meat, man. <laughs> yeah, I I I, uh, I had nights with my mattress on the floor. The old school days when the mattress was on the floor, and I had a fucking like. $15 Ikea desk and it was my mattress yeah. and my computer and a desk. That's all I had. But I had many nights in there where I was, I, I would stay up at night worried that I wasn't going to make enough money to be able to stay out here. That was the war. That was the hardest worry. That would break me down bad. I would get nervous because I never asked my parents for money. I never once asked for money and I, you know, never did ever, ever till this very day. I've never asked them. I never wanted to ask for money. So that was tough, man. I had a lot of nights where I was worried incessantly, like how would I pay my cell phone bill? How would I pay for the rent plus this plus that? And then what would I have left over? And those nights are the fucking, those were the worst. I didn't have a ton of them. I'm not, I, I wasn't, I'm lucky enough where I had, I always got a couple of jobs to come through. When I mean jobs, I mean like random ass bullshit, production right. work or assistant right. work or, you know, I, I would always have a, a little, uh, just enough to get through. But you know, those are the days when you're living check to check and you got a couple of bucks left over in your bank account and i was worried i when i heard people i remember one time i remember hearing brett ernst um tell me that he had uh, five grand in cash for an emergency at his house and i thought i was like i'm gonna go rob brett ernst <laughs> 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 i was like you better have a new emergency plan because i'm gonna rob the fuck out you of also you, better have more than five thousand fucking dollars yeah. these days he was well this was this no was, i mean this was also plan. what this was way this was yeah. 2000 and seven or eight or something like that but i remember him saying that at a at a at a, at a show at a stand-up show that we were getting paid 15 bucks um 15 bucks and you could get a free beer and that was a big deal like back in the day i mean i remember being like damn dude i'm fucking it's heavy getting money paid, I'm getting yeah. fucking paid but i remember him saying that he was talking he was flirting with some some girl or some shit and like joking around 
He's like, you gotta, you always gotta keep some money. Santino, you got money in your house? And I was like, what? And he's like, you got a little bit like a side stash just in case? And I was like, what the fuck? Side my, stash. My, my stash is in my pocket right now. <laughs> That's all I have. It's a hundred bucks in my pocket. I used to have fucking, I'd have nightmares that I would move home. Yeah. Because I couldn't afford it or save money. And then while I'm, so it would be this anxiety dream within an anxiety dream where I move home and then I can't get in Baltimore. I can't get up on a Monday. Yeah. I can't get up on a two Wednesday, th you know what I mean? And go do shows. And now I'm saving money, but I'm not fucking doing what I want to do. That is a nightmare. I used to have that fucking nightmare all the time. I, th I think Burr, Burr has a quote online about that. Burr talked about, he's like, you know, sleeping on a futon isn't the worst thing in the world. You know, Burr was saying that like the worst thing in the world is like living a life that you don't want to live. Yeah. Yeah. L sleeping next, sleeping to, next someone to someone you don't, that you, yeah, that you don't love. Don't love. Yeah. He's like, you know, comics that sleep on futons, you know, there's, a, there's this weird connotation of like, you know, you're a poor comic. It's like the, oh, that's the saddest thing in the world. Like what a shitty life. But it's, if you're doing what you love, that can't, can't be that fucking bad because it could be way fucking Hell, worse. In my thirties, I was still sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I didn't have a bed frame. Yeah. Or bed anything, frame's so real adult shit. That's adult <laughs> shit, bro. I was a two box springs in a mattress. Make me feel like I was higher yeah, off the ground. That's just so out the go so far. I want to be <laughs> able to tie my shoes when I sit down on this fucking bed. <laughs> It gets weird too when you're used to falling a little farther distance onto a mattress and box spring on the floor than when you can actually just sit, sit up on it. <laughs> I felt good about myself when I could just sit you're on like, that. Oh, look at me. Look at me. All the way up here. All the way up here on this pillow. Three and a half more feet off the ground. <laughs> yeah, mattress on the floor was uh, forever, forever for me. That was tucked it right in the corner. I didn't know. I didn't even know. I think, I mean, I just didn't understand. Bed. I thought buying a bed set was such an absurd thing to do. Yeah, I thought it was like an old person. Yeah, thing. I was like, why the fuck yeah. would you need that? <laughs> yeah. The box spring is a box. It goes on the floor. That's what the fuck it's That's for. That's what it's for. Yeah. I never, I couldn't wrap my head around that shit I, I, until until finally you, you see the luxury of it and you're like, no, oh, I kind of like this shit. I don't buy this. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm just a fan of the struggle. I'm a fan of the struggle. Sure. And, and that's the thing. You too, don't want to like, have it right now, though. I don't want to have it now. You're too but, old. For but that. getting it you appreciate it so much more when oh, you yeah. get there you appreciate like i mean i slept on futons i slept on people's couches lazy i lived boy. in my car for a few weeks yeah. i fucking yeah i've slept in lazy, lazy boys. boys i've you know i lived in the basement of my grandmother's place anything any I, I mean i hung my clothes up on the gas pipes <laughs> I, I remember <laughs> I one that. time going i don't know if that's a good idea and i was like yeah they are kind of hell i didn't even think that it would <laughs> pop the pipe right out of the fucking thing and kill everybody <laughs> i was like i just need to play i, I strung up jacket. some stuff through the electrical too so we'll see if that works out if this bitch burns to the ground <laughs> oh shit well yep, the struggle is worth it and in the end it is and yeah. look at you now you've got i'm dying up here what else yeah. do you have going on right now i'm you've shooting a show for fx that's going to come out in the fall i start in august it's me and little dick Dickie, the rapper oh yeah uh, i saw you prom you promoted that a while back didn't you we or just at least we, saw something i just threw it, it online yeah. that we got picked up um and then uh you know my podcast uh whiskey ginger where people can go check all that shit out online go to whiskey whiskey ginger on all your platforms um and then i'm on the road i'm touring a bunch i'm doing some shows with rogan which is incredible and then i'm touring on my own um, i saw the one you guys down in san diego that fucking arena you Thirteen thousand humans that's just that's gotta be nuts mind-boggling at first i thought i was gonna be nervous but then honestly it was the opposite it was so invigorating it was like the the, the, the sound was so heavy it was beautiful man it, it, it like you couldn't i feel like i couldn't fail do you know what i mean like yeah. you were like this is so dope all i have to do is do what i usually do and i get this much response from this many people a smaller room is way harder i'll say that Tiny rooms that would have gaps in them. You know, a 300 seater that's like half full. Ooh. Yeah, and they're 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 mixed all around. There's like a pocket of empty Ooh. chairs right here. <laughs> you want to talk about hurt? You go watch a comedian hurt getting some laughs in those rooms. Some, yeah, no, that's for hard. An hour. Oh god, some fuck. Laugh. So when you do a 13,000 seater that are packed, that are comedy fans that want to be there, that are that are they respect Joe's vouching. It was the, the the reception and the and the welcoming is amazing, and because of Rogan, I've increased people that know me through him. So now oh, sometimes yeah, I do dude. the shows, and half of these motherfuckers know me, and it's great that you're I like love seeing it happen. It's incredible, you. man. It, it feels so good. You're one to of like the good ones. I've it. always liked you. Thank you're you, just dog. a good fucking dude. ditto. Yeah, I love seeing you. You have good energy. I get excited when Tr you're. We're around. Tr we're all trying because at some point we got to know we're in this boat. We're doing this fucking thing together. We were talking about that outside. Yeah. I think the more singular you are, the more alone you are. You're going to be at the top by yourself. It's going to be tough. What's the point? Well, you're going to be sad as fuck. Yeah. You can have it all. I mean, That's we know right. some of these guys. I'm not trying to. I know. Yes. But we know these guys that, that some guys that get up there and they're all alone. And 
it's weird. You almost feel bad for them. That's so funny to say. It's like they have all the things that they wanted, but nobody to have fun with and nobody to really enjoy it but themselves. And that is some sad ass that shit. Is some sad, sad shit. shit. Like you want to be like, I got the biggest pool. It's like, no one's coming over to swim. No one's swimming in the ball of water. <laughs> that's, a sad, that's a sad place to be. That is a sad Nobody place wants to, be. to fucking hang. I mean, and I've seen it a few times. I have some friends that have a lot of money. Or not people that aren't even my friends that are in our perif periphery that I'm just like, ooh, that's tough. I'd rather be with people. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd much rather be. be with some people that I think are cool, that yes. are a part of the game. So I think we all keep helping each other and making this thing happen and people keep going to live shows supporting other com comics it'll only get stronger you know they, we, we just have to cut out some of the the negatives you know like tom and christina christina they're bad people i don't i, I, I think we need to slice them out fucking terrible they're bad people yeah they're bad people they keep so. asking me to come on the show and i'm like Guys, don't I'm do not it i'm not gonna fucking don't do, do it. it i'll be on your network but i'm not i would not go on their show. fucking show yeah. you know that you know that whole thing was a lie that whole mcdonald's thing was it was actually arby's that's <laughs> That's why the colors are the colors. Arby's threw their money up. Arby's threw their money up. That, so they went to McDonald's. Hardee's. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not even Carl's Jr. Hardy. But but um, but I but you know I I appreciate the community. I appreciate all this the fans, all yeah, the people that are listening, yeah, that are watching, real. that do their thing. We'll keep doing it if you keep fucking coming through. You know. Well, I appreciate you coming on and opening up. I know it's not always easy. So I, thank I, you. Thank you. I hope it. he. Does, I hope my, my my family doesn't see this. This will be be terrible. For I me. don't know. Uh, we're we're big in prison, so you're. Definitely <laughs> he's not in prison anymore, well, man. We'll see. I got a feeling he's going back. <laughs> um, will you one more time promote whatever yeah. you'd like again, please? Your website. Oh yeah, just go just go to andrewsantino.com. Uh, this weekend I'm in Bridgeport, Connecticut, baby. Stress Factory. Next weekend I'm at the La Jolla Comedy Store. Uh, Cheeto Santino on Twitter and Instagram and go listen to uh, Whiskey Ginger on YouTube and all the podcast platforms. And people yell at us for a while. They're like, it's not on this. I was like, it is. It's on all those. It's on all the shit. I, I, like people were yelling. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, man. It's everywhere. Yeah, I promise you. People are like, I'm not on Apple. I don't have iPhones. Like it's everywhere. Then you can dude. also go to like for my site, the honeydewpodcast.com. You can go there and just stream it right from there if yeah. you can't find it anywhere There you else. go. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Thank you, brother. Thank I you, love man. you. Love I appreciate you. you coming on. I am Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.